Hi everybody, part four of Michael and Kung's story. Again, for you guys coming into the video, if you're not into the stories, this isn't for you. If you are, you want to catch up, this is part four. Jump back to part one and catch up. So we left this story. Um, Michael and Kung were having breakfast and Kung had turned around to Michael and said, um, I'm not sure what we should do at this point. I'm getting feelings for you. I don't want to hurt you and I don't want to get hurt. Should we break up or should we continue? Um, I want to look at a business. Tomorrow I wanted to go to Samui. I've never been there before and I want to, where I, I, I believe that's where I'm going to want my business. But I need to go and look and spend some time down there. What do you think and what are your feelings, Michael? And she's put the ball in his court. This is the first time she's put the ball in his court. He's besotted, he's in love. He's got all these feelings, but he's actually listened to his head at this point. And he's turned around and said, um, I came to Patea to retire. I didn't uh, have any thoughts of getting involved in a business. I didn't think I'd meet anyone. I didn't even think I'd fall in love again. He said, and I have. He said, how about we'll go to Samui tomorrow, we'll take a two or three week holiday together, see how we get on, and you can have a look around, around Samui for business opportunities, and we'll, we'll just take it slowly, have a holiday, and see what, what we think. Kung said, Okay, that's a good idea. Very sensible. Uh, remember, she's, her English is great. Really, really good. I can't get the wrinkly body out of my head. Anyway, so he said, let's do that. Let's go for it. And she said, okay, I've got some stuff on today. Um, I'll get a taxi in the morning to your condo and pick you up. Um, do you think you could arrange some flights from Bangkok airport to Samui. And when we get there, we'll try and find a hotel. Um, and she said, try and find somewhere near a beach, maybe not too busy an area. And he said, yeah, I said, he said, I'll take care of that. I'll sort something. <laughs> so she's, <laughs> yeah. So that's it, he's headed off home. He's gone and seen his friends. She's gone home. He's kind of seen his friends and told them what's happened. And they've sort of, whoa, this sounds, oh my God, this is a bit fast, Michael, and you're now going off on a holiday and you're spending money and do you know this girl properly? And you don't want a business and <laughs> all the doubting Thomas stuff, you know, but it's good advice. And he said, yeah, I know, you're, you're, you're right. I've got to slow things down and work out what I want. He said, but I've, I've fallen in love with Kung, absolutely fallen in love. She's amazing and different. They said, okay, well, we'll watch over your condo, uh, enjoy your holiday, and uh, we'll see you soon. Off he goes home, uh, jumps on the phone, internet, gets uh, the Bangkok Airways, I believe is the only airline flies down to Samui, so he's, he's booked a couple of flights uh, down, just one way. And he's had a quick look around online for hotels and he's really not sure about that. So he thought, well, I'll leave that. We'll, we'll uh, get there, flights in the morning um, by lunchtime. So we'll have plenty of time, daylight to find a hotel. So he's just booked the flights and uh, he's paid for them. Next day comes morning. Kung arrives in a taxi um, about eight o'clock in the morning. I think they, they must have arranged this. But anyway, eight o'clock she turns up, he comes out with a case, checks in the car. She kisses him on the cheek, they get in a taxi and he's told her he's just booked flights, he couldn't find a hotel, didn't know what she wanted, etc. She said, that's fine, we'll sort it when we get there. Off they go to Bangkok, jump on the plane, down to Samui. Neither of them had been to Samui before. Um, and I haven't either, so. 
they've got into Samui, they've got out the airport and they've jumped in a cab now Kung knew roughly the towns and I think it was they've actually gone to a, the, a busy part they've gone to Chuan Beach I think it is Chuan he did tell me Chewang or Beach some, which is meant to be the busiest part they've gone to there but just along from there a bit about a mile along and um, Kung had spotted a couple of hotels online previous and said I found one I think is quite nice and it's reasonable price and they've turned up at this hotel not booked just turned up on the door and loaded the ca cases from this taxi paid taxi walked in as walk-ins so you're probably going to pay more doing that um, and this is a four-star hotel and Kung said to Michael I'm thinking should we say two weeks here um, but let's book a week at this hotel in case we want to move around the island and it, yeah that's a good idea 2800 baht a night the hotel but they've got an offer um, if you book seven nights they're given ten nights so okay it's a bit longer than they were going to stay but at that hotel but it's come out at a reasonable deal it includes breakfast no other meals um, and they've agreed yep yeah, this is fine and it's a uh, quite a large double room with a sea view it's on the beach so must be a lovely hotel must have been a lovely hotel and um, so reception Mike was just pulled his card out I'll pay for it don't worry Kung didn't even make the offer it was just you know, this time Mike was just straight out with a card pay for the hotel deposit or whatever and they checked in lovely room really nice and at this point um, you would think they've just got there they're going to go out and get some food and things but no Kung has taken Michael to a shower again and so on and so on before they put casual clothes on and Kung has said put some shorts on Michael and a shirt and I'm going to put some shorts and she's put for the first time he's ever seen her not in a dress she's put some smart shorts on and a blouse and a hat and glasses looks a million dollars Apps are puff, the key for the wrinkly body. I can't get that out of my head. It looks a million dollars, and Michael's wow. And he's put some nice, smart, casual shorts and things on. And off they've wandered, had a look around, and gone down the beach. Romantic walk along the beach. It's paradise. Absolute paradise. He's hooked. He's got no chance, absolutely no chance on this planet of getting out of this one now totally hooked such an amazing woman he's found absolute dream and to think he met her on beach road in Patea. yeah really amazing so over the course of the next 10 days they've had many romantic meals many um, horizontal aerobic sessions and been, it's like being a honeymoon. Uh, Kung hasn't really looked for businesses at this point. They've yeah, ten days in that hotel. It's like a honeymoon, and she's treated him like an absolute king. He, she's done everything that you dream of as finding a a, a new partner. Absolutely treated him marvelous. English is great. She's a good-looking girl. She's hooked him even more. She's put that fishing rod out and she's starting to reel him in more and more day by day. He he can't fault her. He can't fault. He's just going even more every day. Deeper and deeper in love with her. So the 10 days in that hotel is coming to an end. Um, and she's turned around to him, I think the night before the 10th day, and said again to him, I've had the most amazing time with you, Michael, here in Samui. The island's beautiful. I'm really falling for you, and I don't want it to stop. And then Michael said exactly the same. Absolutely smitten. 
And so he said, well, I think, you know, I'd love to continue in our relationship. Let's just keep going. And uh, now you want to start looking at businesses. Let's, um, let's stay at this hotel. He says, I, I like it. It's, it's lovely. And um, we can hire a car or whatever and wander around the island and start looking at what businesses are available. That was like hook number 10 or whatever. Kung said, yep, brilliant, let's do that. So they've had their evening meal, they've gone to reception, we're going to stay longer. Um, and the hotel have said, we've got plenty of rooms, we'll do your special rate, you can do it day by day, we'll just charge you 2,000 baht a night from now on, uh, including breakfast, which is brilliant. Michael, yep, that's great, brilliant. So the next morning, um, I don't believe the island's too big, but it's probably cheaper to rent a car or a motorcycle to wander around and keep using taxis. Um, Kung has said uh, that the roads are quite narrow by the looks of it. I'd probably feel more comfortable on a, a scooter. I can ride a motorcycle scooter. How about you, Michael? And Michael, he's had bikes and things. He's no problem at all on a scooter. So let's rent a couple of scooters. So we got one each and we can have a wander around. Yeah, no problem. Had a word with the hotel. There's a place just along the road that rents them. So they've gone along and rented two scooters. And Kung has paid for these two scooters. Um, arranged. And it, it, it wasn't, it, it was a two, three, four hundred baht a day each scooter or something. And Kung has handed her ID card for a photocopy, so they've got copies of everything. Hotel details, Kung's taken care of them, and she's paid deposit. Without Michael offering, he's like, mm, okay. And they've got the bikes. So, they then spend the next two or three days venturing out further and further around the island. Um, and on about the third day, just after lunchtime, they're coming back into the Chiwang, Chiwang Beach or whatever it's called, but a different way they've come in from the other end. And lo and behold, Kung spots a for sale sign on a building which is closed. It looks, it's three stories. It's a shop at the bottom, at the front, with a nice big concrete section out the front, all tiled. And then it's an end of a row of shops with, with two other floors above. And she's intrigued and says that possibly could be a guest house. Um, or made into a guest house. I'd like to see, have a look at that and get inside. And there's a phone number there. So Kung gets on the phone and arranges for the next morning to view this property. And it's literally, uh, it's on a row of shops about 200 meters down the road is the beach. And there's a few bars uh, and restaurants in this row. So it's it's quite close to the main beach. But if, maybe a quarter of a mile from the main, main nightlife area. So next morning they've arranged uh, the viewing of this place. They go along, jump on the bikes, hotel, zip along, meet this guy, Thai guy. And they've looked in and originally it was a guest house. There was a, what the shop was, is they put a front on it, but there was definitely an old uh, counter there and stairs going up. And there were five big double rooms upstairs on these floors and one like a small little apartment at the back, an extension, which had a sort of, it was like a junior suite of a hotel. So five good rooms, a little junior suite maybe for the owners to live, nice reception area that could be made into a bar as well. And then a good large section at the front with a ramp going up to it for disabled access or for pushing motorbikes up onto that section. Um, and this building was for sale. 
so we had a look round and uh, come thought this is really nice this is just the sort of thing I'm looking for um, thank you for letting us see it and off they headed back to the hotel and this was first thing in the morning so they've gone back before lunch to the hotel and Kung says to Michael that is the sort of place I'm looking for that would be a great business you know five rooms a bit of a bar downstairs maybe do some other little businesses at the front um, it's it's perfect really but I need to look at the money and uh, figure something out. Anyway, so they're in the hotel, lunch time. Let's have lunch in the hotel. So they have lunch in the uh, the hotel. The price on that building in the current state, the owners wanted six million bar for it, freehold. So outright purchase. Um, it's obviously quite expensive on Samui, and this was quite a few years ago. So that's where we're going to leave it today. That's part four done. There's still more to come. Yeah, and it's your fault, Alan. <laughs> Next time. See you for now. Bye bye.